Uh-oh. They say, where Malachi? Oh, watch out now. Y'all better find Malachi. I ain't going to get this in the Old Testament. Let me put it that way. Malachi. They say, Malachi who? Malachi. <laughs> Malachi, amen. Uh, the third chapter, we're going to go there. Yes. Uh, and then, uh, when you get there, uh, we're going to ask you to uh, swing over to Proverbs, uh, the 17th chapter. We'll, we'll wait for you. First of all, that's Malachi. Malachi, that's the last book before. Matthew. Uh, yeah, you know we got some readers in here. Uh, Malachi, that's the second chapter, second chapter of Malachi. The second chapter of Malachi. And then we're going to have you to swing over to uh, Proverbs, the 17th chapter. Amen? Okay, we're going to, we, we, we have some pages uh, still turning, some computers still flashing. Uh, one more time, that's Malachi. Amen? Uh, the second chapter, we're going to just read one verse out of there. And then we're going to swing over to Proverbs, the 17th chapter. Uh, if you're there, say amen. Amen. If you need a moment or two, say hold on, give me one more moment. Uh, and if you don't have your Bible, then definitely uh, slide next to someone who has their Bible so that you can read along. Uh, here it is, Malachi, the second chapter. And we're going to read verse 17. Is that our job? Yes, Very powerful scripture. The scripture that every child of God needs to know. The Bible says, you have wearied the Lord with your words. With your words. Yes. Yes. Yet you say, when have we wearied him? Yes. Watch this, y'all. When you say, everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord and he delighteth in them or where is the judgment of God can we just read that one more time because because we don't talk about this in the church but, but this is one of the reasons why many of God's people are not getting to a certain place the Bible says you have weary y'all know what weary means it means you have disgusted God. God. God is disgusted with your words. You uh, with, uh, with your words. Yet you say, "Where in have we disgusted God? How in the world we disgust, disgusted God? I come to church every Sunday. I'm I tired every Sunday. When you say, when you say, when you say, everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord." And he delighted in them, or where he is, the judgment of God. Amen. We close the book right there, but here it is, Proverbs 17. Watch this, y'all. Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17, verse 15. It goes right along with this. Watch this, y'all. Y'all got it there? Yes. Watch this. He that justified, watch this, the wicked, and he that condemneth the just, even they both are an abomination to the Lord. God's word is already blessed. You may be seated. All right. In the presence of the Lord. Come on, Pastor. Bring it. That right there ought to just woke you up right there in your spirit right there. I said, Hold on now. Need to know that was there. I better watch who I call good. I better watch myself. I better watch what I say. Amen. As as God continues to lend us direction, God's house of prayer. To those who desire in their Christian walk to get to a place to be able to experience what God has prepared for them that love them. And to be able to experience the things that God has freely given to us. And make a point where the Bible, or we just mentioned, God is speaking to those who have a desire. Understanding that God is speaking with everyone. But everyone does not have a desire to get to a place of 
experiencing the things that God has prepared for them that love them. Amen. And getting to a place to experience the things that God has freely given to us. And I discovered, I discovered that, that, that the reason why many don't desire is because there are some that desire, but there are some that simply just want the things that God has for them. And there is a difference between desiring the things of God and just simply wanting to things of God. Can we talk to you just for a minute? When you get to the place of desiring the things that God has for you, that means that you have gotten to a place where you have got a made up mind that you would allow God into your life. Yes. And not only allow God into your life, but allow God to change whatever he needs to change in order to get you to that place yes. where God desires to take you. Yes. But for those that just want what God has for them, mm -hmm. you sit around all day telling God, I want this and I want that. Mm -hmm. But yet you refuse to let God inside to change whatever he needs to change in order to get you the place where God desires for you to get to. That's why the Bible says that whatsoever you desire, that when you ask, believe it, and you shall receive it. Because, because that means that individual has got a made up mind that they have said to God, God, whatever you got to do, whatever you got to change in my life, in order to get me to the place where I can see the things that you have for me. There's a difference between desiring the things of God and wanting the things of God. And one of the truths that, that the Holy Spirit has shared with the church that we must adhere to in order to get to the place of experiencing the things that God has prepared for those that love them. And for experiencing the things that God has freely given to us. Is that as a church, as a people of God, we must get to a place of learning how to look at this relationship in which we have been called into with God through Christ Jesus from a spiritual perspective. I know we've been hearing it for about the last three weeks. But I discovered, y'all, that sometimes God will preach the same matches over and over again. Yes, just ask yes. Jeremiah. Just ask Noah. And I discovered why, y'all. Because I figured, why should God preach something new when we haven't gotten the message that he's been trying to get to us for the last three weeks? That's right. Everybody wants something new. But God said, wait a minute. You ain't got what I've been trying to give you for the last month. Amen. If we are to get to that place, then we must get to a place of looking at this relationship from a spiritual perspective or from a spiritual set of eyes or from a biblical perspective. Why is that so important? Why is that so important? Well, we shared uh, at least three reasons over the last three weeks why that is so important. And here it is again. Why do you keep telling us that? Because God said keep telling them. Amen. Because obviously God wants somebody to get this in their spirit. Yeah. Here it is, and we're going to add a fourth one in which we're going to talk about. The first one, why it's so important that we must begin to look at this relationship that we have been called into with God through Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus from a spiritual perspective is first of all John 4 and 24. And about, about time we finish this message, everybody going to know these scriptures. John 4 and 24. Because the Bible says that God is a spirit. Yes. And they that worship him must yes. worship him in yes. spirit and in truth. What does that mean? That means that God only recognizes worship yes. that is in yes. spirit and in truth. Yes. Are we talking to somebody on today? The, the second point, the second point of why it's so important that we begin to look at this relationship from a spiritual perspective is because the Bible uh, tells us clearly in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verses 9 and 10, said it to you for the last couple of things, because the deep things of God and the things that God has freely given to us, God only reveals them to us by His Spirit. 
I've been talking to somebody. That, 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 means, that means that God does not reveal the things that he has for us Correct. to the natural man. Correct. It means that God does not reveal them to the fleshly man. Amen. It does not mean that God reveals them to the carnal mind. But the things that God has for the church, he only reveals them by his spirit. I'll be talking to somebody on today. Third point, third point, and we talked about it here again. According to 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, the Bible is very clear about it, that God does not see as man sees. Amen. The way that God, the way that man sees things, God does not see them the same way. How, how do we know? Because the Bible says that man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart of a man. I've been talking to somebody else today. Somebody go get this after a while. The fourth, the fourth, the fourth reason why it's so very important that the church, that the people of God, get to a place of looking at this relationship that we have entered into with God through Christ Jesus from a spiritual perspective. It's because what you will find. That if the church, that if the people of God continue to look at this relationship from a natural perspective, if the people of God continues to walk in this relationship looking at it from a fleshly perspective, if the people of God continues to look at this relationship from a carnal perspective, then what will eventually come to pass concerning the church and concerning the people of God is that the church and the people of God will find themselves in a state that rather than being a blessing to God, they will find themselves to have become an abomination to the Lord. Amen. Can, can we just talk to you? Can we just walk through this? If the church or the people of God does not begin to look at this relationship from a spiritual perspective, the church will find itself in a state that rather than walking in the blessings of God, one will find themselves living under curse. Amen. Can we talk to somebody? I know we got somebody just sitting right here. If the church or the people of God, not the buildings now, Mm -hmm. Does not begin to take this thing seriously mm -hmm. and begin to look at this relationship from a biblical perspective. Eventually, one will find themselves in a state where rather than living a life that is pleasing to God, well. they will find themselves that at every turn, we're in God. Amen. Are we talking to somebody? Do we got somebody's yes. attention? Yes. And it's very important. That's why the Bible says in the Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed yes. for the lack of knowledge. Watch this, y'all. Not because there's a lack of knowledge. It's because the people of God are rejecting right. the knowledge of God. Yes. And in this particular context, it is unfortunate that we find in 2017 that many of God's people are rejecting the reality and the knowledge to understand that it's important that we look at this relationship from a spiritual Perspective. Amen. Are we walking with you on today? Yes. And so it's on today, my brothers and sisters, we would like to share with you one of the results that has manifested itself in the church that have caused many to experience the consequences of looking at this relationship that the church has been called into rather from a spiritual perspective, but they continue to look at it from a natural perspective. Is that all right, y'all? Now, here it is. One of the things, one of the things that the Bible clearly shares with us that will provoke God to anger. One of the things that the Bible shares with us that will bring 
an offense to God is when the church goes about calling good evil and evil good. Amen. Good. Come on. Come on. We can stop that right there. One of the things that you will find according to the word of God, one of the things that will deem a child of God unclean in the sight of God. One of the things that will disgust God more than anything is when the people of God goes about living life calling good evil and evil good. Amen. When the people of God goes about living life calling bitter sweet and sweet bitter. When the people of God goes about living life calling light darkness and darkness light. Amen. I know I don't have too many folk on this thing. That's all right, though. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Now, 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 here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Now, 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 one of the reasons why this subject is not really preached about or talked about in the church. <laughs> don't even mention it no more. Now, now, we can say we can say that that the devil don't want it mm -hmm. to go forth. But, but, but here it is. God gave me a different perspective on this thing. Mm -hmm. Watch this, y'all. The devil don't care if this word go forth. That's right. The devil say, you can go ahead and preach it all you want to because all I'm going to do is when they leave the church, I'm going to steal that word right out of their heart anyway. That's right. He said, go ahead and preach it anyway because half the folk that you preach it to, they mind on Monday morning anyway. Amen. <laughs> all right. Can we talk to somebody on today? <laughs> but, but one of the reasons why is, is simply because, because calling good evil and evil good has become an acceptable practice Amen. in our society. Amen. And because calling good evil and evil good has become an acceptable practice in our society, it has become a normal way about going or doing business in life. Amen. Did somebody know that? It, it's just part of life now. It's just ingrained in our society. And, 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 and so and so it's on today we would like to share with you on how it has become acceptable practice in our society. We, we just want to share with you what it looks like and how it has become ingrained in our everyday lives. Is that all right with y'all? That's all right. I don't know about y'all, but, 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 but I don't want to be looked upon as an abomination to the Lord. I, I don't want to live my life under the curse. I don't know about y'all, but, but I want to be a blessing to God rather than being a curse to God. And, and so if there's something that I'm doing in my life, then God, you hurry up and correct me because yes. when I discover one of the ways that God shows that he loves us is that he will take time to correct us in doing something that... Amen. Come on. Are we talking to somebody on today? Amen. One of the things that we only got a few minutes to time for a week. Take time your time. Fine. Take your time. One of the things that one will find about human nature is that it is difficult for human nature to accept responsibility for wrong yes. doing. Yes. Are we talking to the Bible? Amen. One of the things that you would find about human nature is that it's difficult to accept responsibility for wrongdoing. Amen. Amen. That is why, that is why, that is why many times when you find, we're talking about the church right now, and I'm in order to because the Bible says we ought to judge the church. You know, I ain't concerned about the folk that's outside the church. The Bible says you're supposed to judge folk that's in the church. Amen. Read the scripture now. Why this y'all church got it so mixed up? We so busy judging folk outside the church. God said, no, no, you leave them alone. I'll deal with them. You, 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 you deal with the folk that's inside the church. Amen. One of the reasons why you will find that whenever a child of God commits a sinful act, Whenever you find a child of God that will commit an act that's contrary to the word of God. Amen. Their first reaction will not be to repent. Oh, wow. But their first reaction will simply to try to free themselves Amen. 
from that blame. Y'all ever notice that? Whenever God convicts you of something you've done wrong, the first reaction, the first thing you have to jump out of is you will try to free yourself from that blame. Now, now watch this, y'all. Now watch this. Here it is. And, and, and one of the ways that one will go about trying to free themselves from that blame or that responsibility of that sinful act that you have just been convicted of by God in your life, is watch this, y'all, is that one will reach down in that carnal mind. Come on. Watch this, y'all. And try to find, well, I'm going to use I'm gonna use a terminology to catch you on this, a good enough, good enough, a good enough reason why you did what you did. Amen. Are we talking to somebody? Are we down come somebody? On, come on. Are we down somebody? All right, now I want to pick this thing up. One of the ways that, that one would try to free oneself from blame is that, is that you would reach down in that mind and you will go about trying to find a good enough reason on why you did wrong. Mm -hmm. And watch this, y'all. And what you will find is, is, is that most of the time you can come up. You, you can find a good enough reason why you did wrong. Mm -hmm. now, 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 what you don't understand is, is, is that by you looking for a good enough reason why you sinned or, or why you uh, looking for a good enough reason of why you did wrong, what you have done is you have just justified your sin. Amen. Are we talking to somebody else? You, you have just justified your sin. In, in other words, watch this, because you have come up with a good enough reason why you sinned against God, you have just justified your sin. Can I talk to somebody? Now watch this, y'all. And because of the society that we live in, if you can come up with a good enough reason why you did what you did. Because of the society that we live in, if you can come up with a show enough good reason of why you sinned against God, from a worldly perspective, the world will free you from your responsibility. Oh, yeah. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? From, from a worldly perspective, if, if you come up with a good enough reason of, of why you sinned against God, guess what, y'all? The world will forgive you of your sins. And watch this, y'all. And you will go about thinking that you ain't done nothing wrong. Are we talking to somebody? I know we're talking to somebody because we're talking with somebody or to somebody. But why watch this, y'all? But, 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 but when we look at it from a spiritual perspective, when we look at it from the eyes of the throne of grace, okay. whenever you justify your sinful acts, whenever you reach down and, and you find a good enough reason of why you sinned against God, what you have done is you have just called evil good and good evil. Yes. Wow. wow. How is that? How is that so? Because, because, because by justifying your sin. By, by, by finding a good enough reason of why you sinned against God, you have just convinced yourself that what you did wrong wasn't really that bad at all. Yeah. I'm going to let that marinate right there because I, right. I got some eyes that say, Pastor, quit, hurry up, hurry up. We got 15 minutes. How, how is it that you just called evil good and good evil? Because what you have done is you have just co convinced yourself that the sin that you have just committed it's really not sin anyway. You, you know you know the whole saying is, is that if you tell a lie enough, you're going to begin to believe after a while. But, but watch this, y'all. If you justify your sin long enough, eventually you're going to believe that you ain't doing nothing wrong. Oh, can I talk to somebody on today? That, 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 is why, that is why there is no repentance in the church today. That is the reason why nobody's turning back to God because we are living in a time where the church is calling evil good and good evil. We are living in a time where folk are justifying their sin against God. Amen. We're not going to be too long. That's 
all right. We're not going to be too long because this is a folder. Already reaching down for their pocketbook. <laughs> Folk already closing their door, closing their mother. Right. I told you what, God loves us. He'll he, he, he reach down in the root. He want to pull out that stuff that's, that's, that's right. contaminating, contaminating the spirit. Right. Now watch this, y'all. Now here's the thing that really provokes God about this. You, you think God is angry now. You think God is angry now. But here it is. B because the church has fallen into a mindset of calling evil good and good evil. Be because the church has gotten into a, a, a mindset where now they're walking around justifying their sinful acts. That's they they right. have convinced That's themselves right. that what they're doing right. is really nothing wrong with it. Right. it everybody does it. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what has happened now is it, 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 it's gotten out of this church now. Come on. You see, because what happens now is then that when folk that hang around the church. Yes. Mm -hmm. when, when family members that hang around folk that go to church. Yeah. Mm. When, when, when co-workers that hang around folk that go to church. With, with friends that hang around when they go to church. When, when they sin, when, when, when they commit an evil act against the word of God. Watch this show. Watch this show. If they can come up with a good enough reason of why they did what they did. The church will not rebuke them. The church will not renunciate their sin. But if they can come up with a good enough reason of why they did what they did, the church will respond and say, you know what? I can see where you're coming from. Because I used to do the same thing that you did. And other, rather than the church rebuking it, the church will sign up and they don't realize that in their minds what you have done is you have just called their evil good and their good evil. Am I talking to somebody? How many times have, have folks sinned in your, around your life? How many family members have sinned in your life? How many friends have committed a sinful act? And, and you get ready to rebuke, rebuke them and they say, wait a minute, but, but let me tell you why I did what I did. Let, let me explain it to you. And then after they finish explaining it to you, all of a sudden you start feeling sorry for them. All of a sudden you say, well, I'll pray for you. Can we talk to somebody on today? Oh, boy, I, I see right now, boy, I ain't got an amen. I ain't got an amen nowhere. In this church, I, mean, I mean, it's so quiet in this church. I, I think the Holy Spirit did hit home on Sunday. That, that's why the Bible says, watch this, y'all. We read it in Proverbs 17 and 15. It said it right there. He that justifies. When we go around justifying those that have committed sin against the will of God, the Bible says that we have now become an abomination in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Is God speaking to somebody on today? Yes. Now watch this, y'all. Watch this, y'all. We boy, I'm gonna get it. Okay, here it is. Here it is. And so, and so, God gave us an example of how this thing looks. You remember over that in Exodus, the 32nd chapter, when the Bible says that Moses went up into the mount to talk with God. And while Moses was up in the mount talking with God, the Bible lets us know that Aaron and the children of Israel were down making a fool out of themselves. Amen. Being ignorant in the sight of God. They, the Bible says that they they got together and they went on ahead and made them their own God out of a molten calf. You got to be careful when you're waiting on God. Yes. Because if you get impatient with God, you might end up making a God on your own. Oh yes, oh yes. Can we talk to somebody on today? And the Bible says that Moses came down. And he didn't go to the people. But he went to the one that was responsible. Can I talk to somebody on today? Can, can, I, can, can, can I talk to some, 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 some fathers in the house right now? Watch this, y'all. When something go wrong in your house, God ain't going to go to the wife. God ain't going to go to the children. For he going to come straight to you first. Can I, can I talk to somebody? But those that are over a ministry, watch this, y'all. When, when something goes wrong with that ministry, he's not going to go to those folk in the ministry. He's going to come straight to you first and ask what's going on. Amen. That's right, 
Can I talk to somebody? I got to talk to somebody on today. He went straight to Aaron and they said, Aaron, Aaron, what, what did these folk do to make you bring a sin? Now, now watch this. Moses thought Aaron had enough sense to stand on his own. That's why Moses directed the blame first at the people. Can I talk to somebody? See, see, God will hold you in charge because the reason why God puts you in charge is because he thought you had enough sense to stand on his own. Are we talking to somebody on today now? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Uh, he went to Aaron. Aaron, what, 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 what have they done to cause you to bring a great sin? Uh, now, watch this, y'all. You will discover that that Moses had just convicted Aaron mm -hmm. of his wrong. Mm -hmm. but, but, but notice Aaron's first response. <laughs> Aaron, did, Aaron did not repent. Aaron didn't say, I'm sorry, it was my fault. No, 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 no. That's not how human nature works. But, but, but the first thing that Aaron said, he said, Aaron, he said, Moses, let not your anger wax hot against me. Mm -hmm. Because at this particular time, Moses was quite angry. Now, you've got to understand something. Moses had every right to be angry. Right. Moses was not so much angry with Aaron than he was for the sin that Aaron committed against God. Can I talk to somebody? If you are a child of God, anger, sin will anger you every single time. I, I discovered, I discover when folk commit sinful action, you get angry. You're not angry at the sinner, but you're angry at the sin that they have committed. Watch this, y'all. If you don't get angry over sin, there's something. Is wrong Amen. with your walk. Are we talking to somebody else today? We, we just want to give you an example of, 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 of when you get into a state of justifying your wrong. When you when you get to the state of, of trying to convince yourself that what you really did wasn't really wrong at all. Amen. So so here it is. You got to go down there. Moses and Aaron is having a conversation. They're having a man of man conversation. They're having a man of God. To man of God conversation. Now why do I say that? Because this conversation has everything to do with God and the things of God. Can I talk to somebody on today? Can, can I just ask you a question? When was the last time you had a God conversation? When was the last time that your conversation was filled with the things of God rather than the things of this world? Are we talking to somebody on today? Here it is, they were, they were having a, a, a God conversation because it was concerning the things of God. It, it was concerning the people of God. It, it was concerning the actions of God. And, and here it is, uh, Moses comes down and, and he convicts Aaron of his sin. Watch this, y'all. But rather than Aaron repenting, Aaron now justifies what he did. How did he justify it? First of all, he says, wait a minute, Aaron. Wait a minute, Aaron. This might sound familiar to everybody. First of all, let, Moses, you, 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 you know that these people, <laughs> they already been on doing sin anyway. Amen. You, Amen. In other words, Aaron said, wait a minute, Moses, wait, you can, did you forget? <laughs> they already want to do sin anyway. Amen. In other words, Moses, don't you know they hard? You, you know how many times where, where, where God knows my heart. God, God, God knows why I did what I did. He, he, here's the same thing in 2000. It didn't just come up in 2017, but 2000 years ago, Aaron was using the same excuse as people are using in 2006. God, you know my heart. So he said, Moses, you know their heart. But he didn't stop that. But then Aaron goes on and say, well, Moses, you were simply taking too long. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now he tries to shift the blame now. He, 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 he tries to say, wait a minute, Aaron. wait a minute, Moses. And, and I'm just paraphrasing God. Moses, if you wouldn't have took as long as you took, you, you know how when folks try to blame, try, try, try to blow the blame on you first of all. Well, uh, if you wouldn't have did what you did, then I wouldn't have did what I did. But, but, but look where Aaron went. He, he said, but, but, but wait, 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 Moses, I, I, I was talking to the people. And and, and 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 Moses, you you was you was taking too long. And, and you can hear Aaron say, "Well, well, well, Moses, put your 
put yourself in my shoes. You, you know how folk want to want, want, put you in their shoes now. They, they, they want to draw your sympathy now. Y'all know how it is. They, they, they want you to feel their pain now. They, now. Now Moses, put yourself in my shoes. And, and let's say if I was up there. And you was down here, and, and these folk was telling you that you're taking too long. Moses, what would you do? Well, wouldn't you have done the same thing I've done? How many folk have tried to convince you? If you were in the same shoes, you would have done the same thing they would have done. Yes. I've been talking to somebody on today. Amen. And so what he was saying, he was saying to Moses, he was saying, Moses, because you were up there too long. Uh, the, the reason why I sinned against God uh, is because I needed to get us out of this place. Uh, we needed to get somebody to get us to the place uh, where God wanted us to be. Uh, but I discovered, y'all, uh, that regardless of how long God takes to show up in your life, uh, there's no reason to sin against God. Uh, I discovered, y'all, uh, that if you're waiting on a financial blessing, guess what, y'all? We got to learn how to wait on God. Uh, if you're waiting on deliverance, y'all. We got to learn how to wait on God. If we're waiting for a healing in our life, we got to learn how to wait on God. If we're waiting for a breakthrough, we got to learn how to wait on God. If we're lonely and looking for a mate, y'all, guess what, y'all? We got to learn how to wait on God. If that marriage ain't going right, we got to learn how to wait on God because there is no justification for sinning against God's word. Is God talking to somebody on today? You see, when you look at Abraham and Sarah, God promised him that he would bless them with a child. But as time went through, y'all, guess what, y'all? They couldn't wait on God to show up. And so guess what, y'all? They ran ahead of God. And you can see Sarah said to Abraham, Abraham, we really didn't do anything wrong. But you did everything wrong because you didn't wait on God. God stopped about to let somebody know that we got to wait on God to show up. There is no excuse for sinning against God's word in our lives. Come on and give God a praise on today. You see, one of the reasons or one of the ways that we justify for doing wrong in the sight of God it's because when we find ourselves in trouble we say God you took too long and so I had to try to find my way out myself God I was waiting on a way to get out this situation I was waiting on a financial blessing but because you took so long I had to take things in my own hands God because you were waiting so long I've been asking for a mate for years but yet you have not sent me none and so you go out and find Find a mate of your own, but God stopped by to let somebody know that there is no justification for sinning against God in your life. Yeah. Is God speaking to somebody on today? Amen. Amen. Because the Bible says, y'all look at here, y'all. The Bible says that when you get to the point of justifying your sin. When you get to the point of, of, make, of finding a good reason uh, of why you did wrong in the sight of God, uh, then what you have done uh, is you have just called evil good uh, and good evil. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that you have become an abomination unto the Lord. Uh, the Bible says uh, that now you are on the verge of living a life uh, under a curse. Uh, now you are in the verge uh, of wearying God in everything that you do in your life. Uh, and so the Holy Spirit come back to let somebody know if there's anything that you've done in your life and you have justified it if there's any sin that you have committed in your life and you have convinced yourself that there's nothing wrong with it God is commanding the church to repent and turn Amen. from your wicked ways Amen. and turn back to God Amen. is God talking to somebody Amen. on today Amen. and y'all know this why whatever we open up the doors of the church and we say that if anybody 
has backslidden is in a backslidden state. If anybody has sinned against God, it is time to repent because there's no restoration without repentance. And you notice how every head go down. You notice how every mind starts to wonder because we have gotten in a state where the church is called evil good and good evil. We have gotten in a state where the church is called light darkness and darkness light. But God said it's time to come out of the darkness into the marvelous light. It's time to walk according to the righteousness of God rather than living in the unrighteousness of God. Come on and give God some praise on today. Watch this, y'all. One of the reasons why the church has not gotten where they got to is because the church has gotten to a point where now we're calling evil good and good evil. We have gotten to the point that when we sin against God, we justify our wrongdoing. We find a good enough reason of why we did what we did. And watch this, y'all. We even go farther. We're going to find somebody Amen. that will agree with what I did Amen. wrong. Uh, can I talk to you again? Amen. And we avoid those folk that will Amen. convict you. Uh, we Amen. look for folk that will agree uh, with what you did wrong because you can easily find them. Uh, look in your family. Look in your job. Uh, look in your community. They're all over the... Come on now. And so we wonder why the church is in the state that they're in. Because we've gotten in the point of not only calling evil good, but now we're signing off on other folks' evil. And we're telling other folk outside the church it's okay. Because your evil is good, and your good is evil. And the word is very clear to us. The word is very clear to us. Those that justify the wicked. Now God is looking at you as unclean. Now you've gotten yourself in trouble because of somebody else's mess. You think you're helping them, but you have just got yourself in trouble with God. That's why the Bible says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Amen. Because we're constantly going around doing things. Yes. That is provoking God to anger. Yes. Amen. And that is wearying God. Watch yes. this, y'all. Because we refuse to look at this relationship yes. from a spiritual perspective. Amen. Because God does not see things the way that we see things. And what might seem like nothing to us yes. is everything to, him. to God. Amen. And so what is God saying today? When you check your record, when you check your walk with God, don't check anybody else's record. Oh, watch out now. Don't, don't, don't look in a mirror and, 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 and look at somebody, see if you can see somebody else. But, but look in a mirror and check your record. And, and, and see, have you gotten to the point where, where you have been calling evil good and good evil? Where you have gotten to the point that you justify your sin, that now you have convinced that what you do is nothing wrong with it. And not only that, but now you tell another folk, it's all right, baby. Amen. Man. Because I used to do it before. Mm. But I discovered just because you used to do it before. Don't make it right. Don't make it right. Amen. Right. Amen. For those who desire to get to that place, one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why it's so important to look at it from a spiritual perspective, because when we fail to do that, eventually the church will fall into a state where we begin to call evil good. And good evil. That's true. Amen. The doors of the church open right now. The doors of the church.